Trixes for a Stritch Read by Crows Crow Crow Chapter 125 Revealed Trixie wished she could say that this was not how she imaged her day would turn out. Bleeding out on a cold floor with a splitting headache, unknown amounts of freshly inflicted brain damage, and worst of all, a wounded pride. But the truth of it was that this was exactly how she pictured this meeting would end up. A part of her just wanted to go home. She could get away with that, right? Simply leave, crawl under the covers at home, and let Fluttershy enjoy her spa day with rarity. It wouldn't be hard to explain herself once Fluttershy returned to the cottage and found her. They're gone. Trixie perked up an ear. That sounded like rarity. She placed an ear against the door, enabling her to better make out what was said. Now, Fluttershy, are you all right? Emmy. Fluttershy sounded confused. But of course, I can tell something is wrong, darling. You've been acting strange ever since she started living with you. It's all right, dear, you can tell me. It won't leave this room, I promise. I only want to help. She's blackmailing you, isn't she? Wha, what? No. Come now, it's practically textbook. Both of us would rather avoid that shit from happening she said. That's barely one step removed from would be a shame if something were to happen to it. Why else would you be so insistent on letting her leech off of you? I know you'd rather not cause any trouble, but this is serious, Fluttershy. I don't want you to get hurt. Stop it. That witch is not here now. She won't find out. Please, just tell me what's wrong. I can help. Well, ahem, um, if you really want to know. You are. E excuse me. You're what's wrong. Or what's wrong. Or, or, doing wrong. Fluttershy's voice built up in volume as she went. What were you thinking? Having some magical hand fight with Trixie when you knew she's not supposed to. I thought you would be patient with her. What happened to that? She started it. The first thing you said to her was which? You are a grown mare, act like it. She groped you. She hugged me. Semantics. You were clearly uncomfortable, so I helped. Aggravating her concussion is not helping. I'm supposed to take care of her and no matter what I do or where I take her some other horrible thing happens to her. I didn't think you would be one of those things. That's why I agreed to this in the first place. But you're every bit as impulsive as Rainbow Dash. The conversation, if Trixie could call it that, came to a halt, leaving just the sound of some pony's heavy breathing. I realize you are upset, darling, but that is no reason to yell at me like I was some sort of dragon. I'm not treating you like a dragon. I'm angry because you are my friend. Just like you were angry at Rainbow Dash, Red Heart, and Twilight. How do you know about that? Wait, no, don't change the subject. Fluttershy, please. No, you are really rude. I'm sure you were trying to help, but Trixie is not dangerous to any pony but herself. Although that was definitely said in her defense, Trixie felt as if she'd been stung. It was a little unfair to make a comment like that just because she had overexerted herself in an impromptu magic duel. Or nearly set the house on fire when she was home alone. Or panicked and ran away from the hospital and into trouble. Upon reflection, maybe it wasn't entirely unfair. It was quiet for a time, and Trixie could only imagine what was going on in there or what kind of looks were being exchanged. After a small eternity, Trixie heard Rarity let out a deep sigh before continuing in an apologetic tone. Fluttershy, I never wanted to fight. I apologize. I'll admit it was unbecoming of me to antagonize her the way I did. Trixie just got under my skin, but that is no excuse for my actions. I honestly forgot she was still recovering or I never would have been so direct. It's okay, as long as you understand. But, you don't have to apologize to me. Yes, I do. Rarity interrupted. 
I realize you want me to talk to Trixie instead and I will, but I betrayed your trust, and I'm sorry for that. However, I worry about you. Me. Rarity's voice softened. Of course, you've been acting strange lately. In the past week and a half you have taken it upon yourself to, well, let's call it voice your opinion to a dragon, Rainbow Dash, Red Heart, Twilight, and now myself. She paused briefly as though to consider how she wanted to broach the topic. I am delighted to hear you speak out more, I've always thought you should be more assertive. But, this seems like an awful lot of change in a very short amount of time. So, I hope you understand if I worry about you. Oh oh, ahem, um, I... I guess that's true. I, I don't normally, um, speak up so much. I thought perhaps that you may have been under a lot of stress over the past few months. After Night Mammon we have been given some new responsibilities after all. And let's not forget to mention the Ursa attack, or that incident with Gilda, and us dragging you up that mountain. Any pony would be stressed out by now, darling. Rarity paused, apparently getting some sort of nonverbal response from Fluttershy, then added hesitantly, and then there is Trixie. Fluttershy must have given her a look, because Rarity quickly backpedaled. No, no, I don't mean Trixie is directly responsible. Although I admit I previously believed she might have been, but if you say she's not forcing you to do anything, I trust you. However, maybe something related to her arrival. For example, it might just be stressful for you to be around another pony, any pony, for entire days at a time. I mean, it is no coincidence you live as far away from the rest of Ponyville as was feasible. Tha, that's just cause. Ahem. Animals. Aha, uh -huh, and nothing else. Maybe a little. Trixie would have liked to listen in on the rest of the conversation, but the clip club of approaching hooves had her quickly jerk away from the door to appear as though she was definitely not up to anything suspicious again. Aloe had made it back, carrying a mop, some towels, and a fresh bathrobe. Miss Trixie? Are you still with us? Sorry to disappoint you. Trixie smirked and took the bathrobe, getting back on her hooves while holding one towel against her muzzle. Another set of hoof steps announced that Lotus was on her way back as well. As it turned out, the Spaponies had a lot of practice dealing with fainting-related incidents. Trixie wasn't entirely sure where it had come from, but she found herself comfortably resting on a cushy, waterproof couch. She had to pinch her nose and was told to keep her head tilted forward for ten minutes, but she had a nice, cool ice pack to help speed that along. Not only that, but she also had a magazine to pass the time. It was just too bad that the couch was placed much too far away from the door to eavesdrop. Rarity ran her hoof along the rim of the bath, quietly considering the new information she had been presented with. Fluttershy had calmed down, and together they'd discussed some potential causes of her stress. Although Fluttershy was far too nice to outright say it, Rarity felt confident in concluding it was primarily Trix's presence which came as no surprise. What was surprising, however, was the true story of just how Trixie had ended up under Fluttershy's care. It had taken some assurances that anything Fluttershy told her would not leave the room, but finally it made sense why Fluttershy felt so passionately about Trixie's well-being. Oh, Rainbow Dash, you brash feather brain. Why did you have to go and do a thing like that? If she hadn't sworn to secrecy, She'd have some choice words for that little Wonderbolt wannabe. Given the situation however, she couldn't argue with Fluttershy's desire to keep Trixie where she could see her and away from harm. Which sadly meant she couldn't get the biggest factor of stress out of her friend's life. Thus, there was only one thing left to do. There's no helping it then, Rarity said after her deliberation, however, I simply must insist you attend our weekly spam meetings again from this point out. You really ought not skimp on them when you've been accumulating so much stress. Even if it means bringing Trixie along. 
She caught the uncertain look Fluttershy gave her and gently waved it off. Yes, yes. I'll be nice. I don't have to like her to be civil. If that's what it takes to get you to unwind then I'll gladly invite her to. Thank you. Anything for you, Fluttershy. Rarita leaned her head back on the edge of the bath, breathing a contented sigh as the status quo was finally restored. A minute or two passed while Rarita continued to mull over what she had learned. Worse yet, something kept nagging at the back of her head. Something to do with Dash beyond her crazed actions, and also having to do with the source of Fluttershy's stress. Rarity opened her eyes and gasped. The loud sound drew Fluttershy's attention and caused her wings to shoot up in alarm. Are Rarity? Are you okay? Ah ha ha ha. Yes, darling, I just feared I... I may have left Oprah without water while I was away. But no, I clearly remember filling her bowl before coming here. Oh oh, Fluttershy nodded, relaxing back into the water again. That makes sense. Only to you. My dear. Still, how could I forget about something so important and juicy as my best friend dating my other good friend, as it were? I suppose there is yet another major source of anxiety in Fluttershy's life now than just a blue squatter in her house. Rarity knew she had to play this delicately. Fluttershy was a sensitive soul and getting the timid mare to willingly talk to her about dating Rainbow was going to take some careful work. Perhaps if she asked about another pony's romantic life first? But what other pony apart from Rainbow and herself did Fluttershy spend a great deal of time around? Turns out the witch might be of some use to Rarity after all. Forgive the sudden curiosity, darling. She smiled warmly over to Fluttershy, who returned it with equal measure. But, since she arrived, has Trixie shown any interest in any pony? Fluttershy tilted her head to the side curiously. Interest? You know. Rarity waggled her eyebrows suggestively. Interest. Meep. Rarity looked on in confusion as Fluttershy's face turned bright red and slowly sunk into the water until just her tightly shut eyes were above the water line. Darling? She hasn't been telling you any vulgar stories on the matter, has she? A few seconds later. Fluttershy's face reappeared above the water. What? What? No, no. Rarity couldn't hide the disbelief from her voice. Is it true? You're sure there isn't anything you want to get off your chest? I'm all ears. Fluttershy was squirming as she tried answering Rarity what? Well. I could, ahem, uh use some advice. I am may have a, um. A. D date. Rarity's eyebrows rose and she broke out into a happy smile. Really, darling? That's wonderful. And. A little off subject, but we can go back to talking about that blue witch later. Don't call her that, please. Fluttershy glared at her. Ah, right. Sorry. Sorry. Trixie. Of course. I'll get used to it soon I swear. Anyway, let's forget about Trixie and talk about your date. Fluttershy gulped at that. I actually... I am um, might be wa with... Yes? Rarity struggled to contain her excitement, yet couldn't help but lean in closer. She felt so happy for her friend. Finally, after waiting for so long... Fluttershy felt confident enough to tell her about Rainbow and their relationship. Fluttershy didn't respond. Or rather, she didn't answer the question. She did give Rarity an uncertain look, as though she wasn't sure if she could survive forming the words to the answer. Rarity backed off, giving the poor dear a little time to collect herself. Oh, it's all right, Fluttershy, you should not feel obligated to tell me. Although... I've heard that Rainbow Dash was seen doing something awfully suspicious lately. Rarity suppressed a smug as Fluttershy immediately perked up at the mention of the name. She was so endearingly transparent. Apparently she was seen preparing a picnic for two. The two of you are close right? 
You wouldn't happen to know the name of this lucky stallion? Rarita leaned in a little closer to Fluttershy, her lips straining not to curl into a gleeful smile. Or... Mare? Fluttershy looked as though she resided in a boiling pot rather than a bubble bath. Still, she nodded. Really? Rarity said, feigning surprise. Any pony I know. Of course, she knew about the little trice between Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy already. She had helped Rainbow arrange that picnic after all. Even though Rainbow had managed to avoid naming any names, Rarity couldn't think of any pony else that fit the bill. Again there was a nod, though by this point Fluttershy had retreated behind her mane. And does this dear, sweet pony that stole the heart of that little prismatic ruffian have a name? If only she could get Fluttershy to confide in her, then she could finally talk about it. It had been absolutely dreadful, having to pretend she was ignorant all this time while all she really wanted was to discuss the wedding dresses she had in mind for the two of them. Perhaps that was just a little hasty but she'd been struck with inspiration the day before and found just the perfect way to melt the soft yellows and pink with the bright rainbow spectrum in a way that was just to die for. Wah, with. Fluttershy paused and lowered her gaze down to her shifting hooves, and occasionally glanced at Rarity with a look of uncertainty. It was a look that Rarity was fairly familiar with, for her it was a warning that she'd have to hurry. If Fluttershy wasn't coaxed to proceed before she stopped making eye contact entirely then Rarity ran the risk of never hearing the answer. Giving Fluttershy a knowing look, Rarity said, I imagine the date went well. The only real question is whether to have the ceremony at Rainbow Falls or Blossom Valley. The vibrancy of the first would require a different shading, but I'm sure the result would be. I heard it went well for them. Fluttershy replied, but her voice didn't hold the kind of nervous excitement that Rarity would have expected. Rather, she sounded artificial and neutral. I... beg your pardon. Rarity felt suddenly off balance. It wasn't unlike Fluttershy to talk about a personal matter by pretending she was talking about a pony she knew, but this almost sounded as though she was serious. Wah, well... They told me a little about it. But, but I, um... D didn't pay much attention. Rarity could feel the blood drain from her face. There was no way she was this wrong, was there? And the they you are referring to would be... Fluttershy sucked in a breath of air through her teeth, and after a moment finally managed to bring herself to answer in the same almost detached fashion. Rainbow and Trixie. Rarity had heard about the pit falling out of some pony's stomach, but never imagined it could happen to her in a luxurious hot tub. She mused at how, despite being in the water, a great deal of her body suddenly felt cold to the point of numbness. Ahem, um, Rarity. Fluttershy gently poked her full releg. The little touch was enough to snap Rarity back to reality. She fixed Fluttershy with an intense look as the news came into sharp focus again. Our rainbow dash went out with that witch. Fluttershy shrunk back, folding her ears as Rarity screeched. Yeah, yes. Rarity couldn't believe what she was hearing. All that time she'd spent advising Rainbow Dash on how to make sure it would be a perfect date for her and Fluttershy. The peaceful stroll through the forest to let her enjoy nature. The solitary picnic to keep her anxiety of crowds at bay. The music. Oh, Celestia. The music. She had painstakingly picked out the songs that best matched what she knew of Fluttershy's taste. All this time and effort, wasted. Now that she thought about it, Rainbow never actually said who her friend was dating, she'd merely mentioned that she'd want to stay away from other ponies. Naturally, Rarity had assumed this meant a shy pony, but in hindsight it could apply to a fugitive too. She'd been tricked. Bamboozled. Hoodwinked. That cad. That little multicolored monster. Consorting with the blue hay demon. Why? Wait. Why were you asking about dating advice earlier, darling? Fluttershy looked as though she'd rather be back in the dragon's cave than in the room right now. Nervously, 
She repeatedly put the ends of her locks in some transparent effort to give her an excuse not to look rarity in the face as she mumbled. Oh, oh, oh. You are hum. I. K kind of have a due date in two days. It's not, ahem, uh, important, I. And. But. With who? Rarity had to put a hoof on the edge of the bath to steady herself. It felt as though her whole world was tilted at an odd angle. If Dash and Fluttershy were not dating, then who could Fluttershy possibly be going out with? She'd always expected those two to end up together. That was why she'd not even bothered to inquire with Rainbow just who she was taking on the date when she'd spoken to her. The look of nervous resignation on Fluttershy's face made it clear she must have decided there was no way she was going to get out of this interrogation. She wrapped her hooves up in her mane as she answered, Tha, the you um. Be blue hey demon. Rarity felt an involuntary twitch in her left eye. Rarity stared at Fluttershy. Her jaw so far down that she could taste the strawberry bath foam, which tasted nothing like strawberry. Fluttershy, naturally, had crossed her tangled hooves, and completely hidden her face behind her mane. Her mind was blank for an eternal minute. It had to be a joke, but she couldn't even begin to imagine just what she'd done to deserve to be the victim of such a horrible prank. It had to have been a truly terrible deed if Fluttershy would trick her like this. Perhaps Rainbow put her up to it. It seemed like the kind of thing she might do to get payback for being used as a mannequin. No, even if she had, there was just no way Fluttershy would ever manage to lie like that. Rarity's stomach tied itself into a knot. That was right. Fluttershy wouldn't lie like that. So, either Rainbow Dash had taken extensive acting classes, acquired a lot of pink and yellow hair dye, and some colored contact lenses. Or, or, with a sudden splash, Rarity thrust her head below the surface of the water, causing Fluttershy to flinch back in surprise. Safely encapsulated by the water, Rarity's frustration was made manifest. Large pockets of air bubbled to the surface, accompanied by a muffled, surprisingly high-pitched, sound. After the bubbles stopped, it took another ten seconds before Rarity finally rose above the surface again. With one hoof, she brushed the soaked strands of hair out of her face. Before you ask, Fluttershy. No, no, I'm not. The sound of the door opening almost escaped Rarity's notice, but she quickly looked over her shoulder with a feeling of inescapable horror. Fortunately, it was only Lotus Blossom, carrying a bucket and mop. Luckily, she was alone. If Trixie had been behind her, Rarity wasn't sure what she would have done, but she was feeling lightheaded already just thinking about it. As soon as the door closed, Rarity spoke. Lotus. Her voice sounded strained. Lotus set down the bucket and gave her usual smile, oh so blissfully unaware of the crime against nature that had just been revealed. Yes, Miss Rarity. Be a dear and fetch me the waterproof fainting couch. I'm sorry, miss. Unfortunately, it is in use by Miss T. She cut herself off mid-sentence as she caught the look in Rarity's eyes. Ahem, um, another customer. Oh. What poor luck. Well then, Fluttershy. She turned to face her again. The rest of the room seemed to dim around the shaking Pegasus. Oh, wait. That was just her vision signing out. Yeah, yes. Could you be a dear and make sure I do not drown? She just managed the words, before the last bit of light faded from the room. Wha, what? Oh, oh. Another splash. Aloe had cleaned up the blood in the hallway and opted to stay with Trixie while she recovered. Meanwhile, Lotus had wandered off to do something or other. Trixie hadn't cared enough to ask. Given the circumstances, Trixie had to conclude this was actually pretty nice. Aside from the magazine, she passed the time by chatting with Aloe a little. Primarily about the most interesting topic they had available, Trixie herself. 
About halfway through spinning Aloha's story, a scream came from the next room that sounded as though some pony had rolled a piano over the tail of a helium inflated cat. Curiously, Alo didn't seem to react to it. Perhaps she'd imagined the sound? In any case, the show had to go on, and Trixie soon forgot all about it. That's how Trixie single Huvedly defeated three whole packs of Timberwolves, through the strategic sacrifice of her magnificent hat. Trixie might have taken some minor artistic liberties with the story of how she lost her hat in the ever-free forest. Of course Trixie will retrieve it as soon as she's given the Timberwolves enough time to lick their wounds. Allo had a bemused smile on her face. It wouldn't be sporting otherwise, right? Exactly. See, Trixie knew you would get it. Of course. With her story concluded, Trixie's attention was drawn back to the towel she'd been holding against her muzzle. There wasn't any fresh blood on it. A quick inspection told her she was officially back in business. Ah, finally. Trixie knew it was just a minor thing. Allo perked up. That's great. Mostly because I couldn't make out a word of that whole muffled story and it was getting really awkward to be nodding at random. Trixie twitched. It's a good thing Trixie knows your line, or you'd be in trouble. Ditto. Whatever that means. Look. Thanks for making sure Trixie didn't pass out and all that. But can Trixie go back inside now? Technically, Lotus never said anything about keeping you out here in the hallway. I just assumed you were cooling off after that whole thing with Miss Rarity. Trixie supposed that was true. It was a rhetorical question, she said while rearing up on her hind legs and resting her four relegs on either of the double doors, ready to push them open. Aha. Uh -huh. Allo replied while picking up a basket with a bowl of cucumber slices, some jars of unknown origin, and various shampoo bottles. Trixie recognized Rarity's kitty mark on several of the containers. They looked awfully expensive compared to everything else in there. I'll just drop this off then find Lotus. Give it to Trixie, she said while wrapping her magic around the basket. Allo quickly let go and gave Trixie a hesitant, puzzled look. Okay. Well, I'll just go find Lotus and tell her everything is fine then. Allo trotted off, sparing just a brief look back before leaving Trixie to her own devices. This left Trixie a moment to herself to consider how she was going to actually approach this whole thing. Was she just going to walk back in like nothing had happened? Should she even bother going in there? Now that she thought about it. Perhaps it was better if she just went home and left it to Allo to inform Fluttershy of her whereabouts. But then again, she already volunteered to bring the basket inside and she'd look foolish if she gave it back to Allo. More importantly than any of that, Trixie supposed that leaving would mean letting Rarity win. That settled it. With a mighty shove, Trixie swung the doors wide open. The loud bangs of each door hitting the walls reverberated through the room. Trixie grinned smugly as she saw Rarity turn around in the bath, clutching her chest as though it had imploded. Grinning ear to ear as she trotted closer, Trixie proclaimed. Fear not. Trixie has returned. Really, again? You witch. Oh, don't look so grouchy, you'll get more wrinkles. Look. She lifted one of Rarity's bottles out of the basket and shook it while she approached. Trixie has something for your mane, won't that be nice? She smiled. If you come anywhere within a hundred hooves of my mane I will end you. Rarity scowled, then she glanced over at the bottle and her eyes widened. Gah. Put that down. It takes a month to import. All right, all right, jeez. Trixie slid the bottle back into its place and set the basket down on the edge of the bath. Well, so much for the peace offering. How did you even get your hooves on this? Rarity asked while she fussed over the contents of the basket. Before Trixie could answer, Fluttershy's adorable head poked out from behind Rarity. She looked a little shook up for some reason. Are you, ahem, running an errand for Allo? That's nice of you. Ah isn't that nice, Rarity? Rarity had her muzzle in the basket as she rummaged through it, but a gentle prod had her look up. Oh. Oh, yes. 
Yes, of course. She took a moment to collect herself, apparently reassured that everything that was supposed to be in the basket was still there. Thank you for bringing this over. Now, how are you feeling? The great and powerful Trixie is exactly as advertised, and you're welcome. Trixie wasn't quite convinced Rarity actually cared. It felt more to her like the Prince Unicorn was humoring Fluttershy. However, there was something different about Rarity now that Trixie couldn't quite place. Where before Rarity had been cold and mostly attempted to ignore Trixie's existence, now she had a look of almost predatory hunger. That's probably not good. Speaking of hunger, Trixie hadn't had a bite to eat since breakfast and she was feeling peckish herself. Fancy places like this couldn't possibly expect their customers to starve all day, could they? There had to be snacks around somewhere. Oh, right. Trixie did see something to eat. It didn't seem like a good idea for Trixie to take her eyes off the rarity when she was so strangely focused, despite what her stomach wanted. Luckily for Trixie, Fluttershy gently tapped Rarity's shoulder before starting to whisper into her ear, distracting her enough to let Trixie quietly walk over to the bowl of cucumbers and popped one of the pieces into her mouth. Trixie was impressed though, the room seemed almost designed to make soft conversation easily heard, but she could barely make out a word as they quietly whispered back and forth, their eyes glancing over to Trixie every so often. Were they talking about her? Trixie raised an eyebrow. It wasn't nice to whisper in front of some pony and she hadn't expected Fluttershy to do so. On the other hoof, Trixie supposed she had probably interrupted whatever private conversation the two were having when she barged in a moment earlier. She could forgive a few last words in private. Levitating a few of the cucumber slices out of the basket, Trixie trotted over to the far side of the bath, as far away from rarity as possible, and climbed back into the bath at last. The nice warm feeling of the water was a welcome relief after laying on the cool floor the past few minutes. We. Um. I mean, Trixie, darling. Glorious. Trixie supposed it was too much to ask to be allowed to enjoy this for long. For crying out loud, yes. Trixie is, in fact, a hundred hooves away from you. Now let her enjoy the complimentary cucumbers in peace. Ka complimentary Akia. Trixie. Forget about that. Listen, I regret how this day has gone thus far. Come over here so we can do some mere talk. That was a surprising thing to hear. Trixie looked over at Rarity, eyeing the mare suspiciously. What about the get near my mane again and I will end you? Thing? Rarity's face briefly showed an uncomfortable look but she quickly smiled and waved the comment away as if chasing off a fly. Ah uh ha, -huh, ha, ha. It was just a joke, darling. Water under the bridge. I barely even remember it. Now that was definitely a lie. Whatever Rarity was doing, Trixie didn't trust it. Rarity had been at her throat when she left the room and wasted no time in attempting to poison Fluttershy against her in her absence. This was just a sudden change. A minute ago you were all I swear I shall never forget this. And now you want to talk while grinning at Trixie like a school filly. What is this? Rarity levitated over some of the cucumber slices that she had chewed Trixie away from earlier and held one out for Trixie while biting into the other. She didn't seem to enjoy it much, but she still acted as though she did. In him. Times change darling, harsh words were said. It's something of minor importance we can discuss another time. Like say after we get to know each other a little better, yes. So, with that out of the way, let's chat, shall we? Hesitantly, Trixie took a bite of the cucumber as she listened to Rarity. She couldn't exactly find fault with the reasoning. Perhaps it had been a mistake to focus the initial conversation on their disagreement. What? well... Fluttershy wanted to set this meeting up so we could talk, so. So. Rarity said, slapping her hooves together loud enough to overbear Trixie's voice. Are you dating any pony by chance? You are hum. Perhaps. Trixie nervously looked over to Fluttershy, who was doing her best impersonation of a drowning pony. 
Her ears were all that remained above water, but she refused to acknowledge anything happening. Rarity noticed the look and leaned in closer to Trixie. Oh that's just wonderful, what a lucky pony that must be. To get a great and powerful Trixie all to herself like that. Why, I'd have been certain you'd be too much to handle for just one pony. Well, of course. Trixie's more than enough mare for two. Trixie knew Rarity was playing to her ego, but that didn't do anything to dissuade the warm fuzzy feeling in her chest at the sound of praise. Or, at least she thought it was praise. Wait, are you calling Trixie fat? She pulled away from Rarity and gave her a skeptical look. Perish the thought. Rarity said without breaking eye contact, though Trixie wished she had. No, darling, but given that you said too. Might you be dating another pony as well as this first one you just mentioned? There was a certain intensity on Rarity's face that Trixie had a hard time placing. She felt tense, like a rat trap. Trixie shifted uncomfortably in the water. She wasn't sure what Rarity was getting at, but she was being too friendly and much too interested for this to be a line of conversation Trixie wanted to follow. Hopefully she could just give a vague answer and steer the direction of the conversation elsewhere. Ah. Uh, well. That might be the case, but you. And would these ponies be Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash? Rarity interrupted. Wah. Well, T. Trixie isn't sure they'd like her to just. With a horrified expression, Rarity clapped a hoof over her mouth and looked between Fluttershy's ears. The nose had just made a brief appearance before I submerging again, and Trixie. What's this? A manager tour? Between the three of you. Oh, how scandalous. How primitive and base of you. And with such an innocent angel like Fluttershy involved with two arrogant show-offs. Of course, of course she would do something like this. Trixie wasn't sure how or when Rarity had figured it out, but she clearly only asked for confirmation to make a scene. The sudden turnabout momentarily left Trixie speechless, while Rarity rambled on about just how shocking this supposedly was. The fuzzy warm feeling inside had long since corroded into molten fury as Trixie pushed herself up out of the water to tower over Rarity. Trixie knew you'd do something like this. Well if you think you can stop us then. Stop you? Rarity blinked, somehow even more appalled at the suggestion of putting an end to the whole thing than she was at finding out about it. Why, I wouldn't dream of it. Come. Sit. I simply must know all the details of this, Trixie. Don't keep a friend waiting on something this juicy. Confusion and anger didn't make swell. Trixie found herself trying to not let the former override the latter, but this damned mare was making no sense. What? No. You. What? Don't try to confuse Trixie. She knows your game. You just want to tear us apart like before. Rarity tilted her head with a confused look on her face. My game? I'm afraid I don't quite follow you. Why would I want to separate young lovers? I never did such a thing in my... Rarity froze, and her snow-white face somehow became even paler as she quickly looked back and forth between Trixie and Fluttershy. Finally, she managed to breath out. Oh, no. I did, didn't I? Beginning to feel awkward just standing above the water, not to mention cold, Trixie sunk back into the bath. She observed Rarity for a moment as the mare seemed to realize she had quite literally torn Trixie away from Fluttershy with her telekinesis which led to the little magic duel in the first place. I'm so sorry, girls. Rarity said, with a slight tremor in her voice. I didn't realize at the time you two were. I mean... Who would have thought, right? She chuckled weakly. Trixie looked Rarity over. She seemed sincere, but she could just be a good actor. However, if she really didn't know at the time, that had to mean she found out recently. Trixie shot a look over at Fluttershy, who was still pretending not to be there. Maybe it's not Rarity that she's hiding from after all. She let it slip while Trixie was gone. Does she think Trixie is mad at her for it? 
Trixie made a note to talk with Fluttershy later, for now she had rarity to contend with. Even if you didn't, that's no excuse. You had no reason to react like that. Well. Actually, Rarita lightly tapped the tips of her hooves together sheepishly. I may have been under the mistaken impression that Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash were together. And perhaps I jumped to a few conclusions. Like, say for example, I may have thought you were trying to get between them. Oh, Celestia, I had no idea how right I actually was. She fanned her reddening face. That's, well, ah. Uh. Trixie felt her cheeks burn as she pictured the mental image rarity inadvertently painted. T. Trixie supposes she understands. You were just trying to look out for your friends, yes. That, that's fine. Trixie might have done the same then. She cleared her throat, eager to get the conversation elsewhere. Suo, do you suppose Fluttershy needs resuscitation by now? Trixie volunteers. Rarity hid the lower half of her face behind her full relic, but she failed to hide the smirk. Yes, I'll bet you do. A large air bubble popped on the surface, emitting a faint meeping sound. Chapter 126 Ragging All was well with the world. Trixie had everything she could desire at the moment. A cushy easy chair to lounge on. A cozy warm bathrobe to snuggle up in. A servant meticulously washing and styling her mane in the little sink at the head of the chair. And, most importantly, something to brag about to her captive audience. Sometimes Trixie forgot that she was a genius without peer. Of course, her incredible talents were so amazing it was only natural she would surprise herself every once in a while. Everything had gone precisely as she predicted that it would. When Trixie first spoke of actual a meeting with you, she had told Fluttershy from the start we'd get along, but only after another fight. Trixie smirked at Rarity's doubtful expression. You remember that, right, Fluttershy? She tried to turn her head, but surprised Allo with the sudden movement, and was hindered by a slight tug on her mane. Admittedly, this realization of her own brilliance had only dawned on her a good half hour of idle chatter later most of which involved satisfying Rarity's curiosity and getting her caught up to speed on just how the three of them had ended up in this unthinkable arrangement. Given that Trixie was finally doing most of the talking, she was surprised to discover that the overly talkative Rarity turned out to also be a decent listener when she put her mind to it and wasn't too busy finding fault with everything a pony said. Trixie liked her better this way, maybe the mayor ought to be quiet more often. This observation was definitely objective and not at all because she was still just the tiniest bit bitter about getting humiliated in front of Fluttershy who, now that Trixie thought about it, had been even quieter than usual during the entire conversation. In any case, eventually this led the conversation to the day before and Trixie's uncanny prediction of the spam meeting's result, a fight and reconciliation. Fluttershy, her frothy mane being tended to by Lotus, glanced at Trixie from the corner of her eye then quickly closed it again as though she was afraid of getting foam in it. She blindly looked back up at the ceiling with a contemplative look on her face. Oh. Ahem. Um. Now that you mention it. You did say something like that, I think. See. Trixie said triumphantly as she whipped back around to Rarity, inadvertently yanking on her own mane again. Eek. Be more gentle. She scolded Allo, who obligingly rolled her eyes. Lifting the cucumber slice off of her right eye, Rarity offered a silent but apologetic look up to Allo before turning her attention to Trixie. Yes. A master stroke in self-fulfilling prophecy, I'm sure. Though, I cannot help but wonder if things might have gone differently if you didn't start off with the expectation of a fight. She quirked an eyebrow. What do you mean by that? Trixie asked, settling back down in her chair. The great and perceptive Trixie just noticed that it happened a lot. It's not as though she wants to fight every pony she meets. It's not Trixie's fault that other ponies are lousy at meeting new ponies. A muscle in Rarity's face twitched, but she smiled. Well of course not, darling. Getting back to the whole prediction thing, 
tell me about the future, would you? The future? Like lasers? Trixie asked, confused. It's not that kind of prediction. No, no. Rarity waved her hoof impatiently. Your future. Fluttershy mentioned something about a date. Did she now? Trixie glanced over at Fluttershy, who was very pointedly avoiding her gaze. Trixie doesn't remember you saying anything, Fluttershy. So that means it happened while Trixie was gone? Talking behind Trixie's back, him him. She teased Fluttershy for a moment but then turned back to Rarity. That certainly explains why you were suddenly so interested. Oh, no absolutely not. I just thought we should try to get along and, ahem. Oh, all right. I may have been just a little bit more motivated knowing the three of you were, let's say, involved. Rarity gave Fluttershy an apologetic look. Sorry, darling. I didn't mean to let it slip. I, ahem. It's okay. Fluttershy nervously tapped her hooves together. What? We weren't talking. Not behind your back, I mean. Well, you were gone, but it wasn't bad. Oh. I just wanted to ask Rarity for advice. Ah, that kind of advice. Trixie smirked. It was comforting to know that she wasn't the only one that had been nervous about how to handle that aid. She'd spent plenty of time worrying about it on her own, so she could only imagine how it was affecting Fluttershy. It was no wonder she had reached out to a friend for help. It must have been nice to have that option. Trixie turned to Rarity. So. Did you have any good pointers? I may have been a little distracted. Rarity blushed. It was a bit of a shock, you see. At the time, I mean. I'm completely over it now. Oh, no no no, that just sounds like it was something awful. I only meant to say that it demanded my full attention. Yes. So I was distracted. Just when Trixie thought Rarity would devolve into endless rambling, she suddenly regained her composure and asked. Why? Were you looking for some help yourself? I understand you have some unique challenges for most conventional dates, but one type of date you two could certainly try is to make a you thing in us thing. If you are, by chance, looking for ideas. What? No. What makes you think that? Trixie bristled at the implication that she didn't know what she was doing. Was Rarity trying to embarrass her? The great and powerful Trixie has everything under control. Rarity regarded Trixie with a raised eyebrow as Trixie defended herself, but she quickly adopted a smile. Oh, my mistake, darling. I suppose I had you confused for an ordinary pony. You could see how, for a regular pony, it would be a bit of a challenge finding something romantic to do with a particularly sensitive partner in a strange city full of less than amicable ponies and no bits to their name, yes. That's on top of all the regular first date jitters like trying to make a good impression, getting to know the other pony, and so on. She broke eye contact with Trixie and finished with, but, as I said, my mistake. She closed her eyes and leaned back to rest her head into the small wash table at the end of her chair letting the spa pony on duty rinse the shampoo out. Trixie grit her teeth. She knew Rarity was toying with her, but that didn't stop her stomach from turning itself into a tight, balled up knot as Rarity laid out many of the problems and pitfalls that Trixie knew she was faced with. Rarity so casually mentioned all of those things Trixie had questioned herself about that it might not be a stretch to assume the smug hack actually had some answers too. Still, if she asked any questions now it would be as good as admitting she was just some regular, run-of-the-mill pony in need of help. She'd rather die. Oh, I simply cannot image embarrassing myself on the first date. Rarity drawled. Trixie snapped her gaze back to Rarity, who now had a full relic resting across her forehead in a manner that only befitted a true drama queen. Why, of all the worst things that could happen, that is the worst possible thing. Trixie didn't think it possible, but somehow her stomach managed to find a way to add one more twist. She was sure this was Rarity trying to make her feel worse on purpose. After all, 
No pony used a phrase like that wantonly. It might have seemed innocent enough, but Trixie understood. Rarity was trying to establish dominance by lauding her supposed expertise over her. She wasn't going to fall for it. Suddenly, it dawned on Trixie that Rarity's cruel teasing wouldn't just be affecting her. There was collateral damage in the sense that any pony listening that had a first date coming up would be having the jitters just like Trixie. No, worse than her. Did she forget that Fluttershy is in the same boat as Trixie? The poor, cute thing. Trixie can use that. Trixie quickly turned and felt a sharp tug on her mane as Aloe was still working on her, invoking a half-silent curse from the both of them. Trixie ignored the muttered apology that followed from Aloe and fixed her attention on Fluttershy. Who, if she was on the verge of breaking down like Trixie expected, was hiding that surprisingly well. While Fluttershy did quickly look away and pretended she hadn't been staring at Trixie, she didn't look like she was worried. Well, not more worried than usual anyway. She still had that same nervous look about her she got every time Trixie spoke with Rarity. It didn't make sense. If anything, a pony as sensitive as Fluttershy ought to be in tears by now with insecurity if even the great Trixie was feeling nervous. Was it possible that Trixie was more easily affected than Fluttershy? Trixie refused to believe that. But then, there was only one other option, wasn't there? Rarity must have said something to her after all. Whatever Rarity told Fluttershy. It must have been good. The realization was both a blessing and a curse. It was good to know there was an answer to her problems, but then Rarity really did have the answers. This meant she couldn't ignore her as easily. The thought of having to swallow her pride and come crawling back to the waiting unicorn was too much to bear. Trixie briefly entertained the thought of asking Fluttershy later, but quickly dismissed it. She couldn't stand the idea of making herself look foolish by admitting she needed help. Especially not in front of the sweet filly she most desperately wanted to impress. The reliable and desirable Trixie always had everything under control. Wait a minute. Trixie smiled slowly as she realized Rarity had left an opening. She leisurely leaned back in her chair and glanced over at Rarity. The worst possible thing? If it worries you so, what do you do to alleviate that? Trixie did her best to sound casual. She could not let on how nervous she actually was or Rarity might realize she was being tricked into giving advice without Trixie actually asking for any. Rarity's ears perked up as Trixie addressed her, and with one eye she briefly regarded Trixie's carefully composed, relaxed features. After a moment of deliberating silence, she finally answered. Well, a spa day is a good start of course. Looking my best not only helps me feel confident, but shows that I value the other's opinion enough to take the time to do so. First impression and all that? Trixie asked. This didn't seem useful at all considering she'd already met Fluttershy. Not exactly. Unless it is a blind date, you already made your first impression when you first met them. Still, if you're on a date, you obviously made a good one already. No, it's about showing you care. Trixie can't believe that it is all you do. There's a lot more involved, isn't there? She did her best to sound almost disinterested inspecting her newly manicured hoof as she spoke. Rarity smiled. The kind of smile that a filly might have when a supposedly empty cookie jar had one left after all. An evil cookie. That kind of cookie smile made Trixie feel uncomfortable. Ooh, no. Of course not. A slow sweat drop worked its way down Trixie's brow. Rarity must have caught on that she actually wanted to know and had tried to trick her. Trixie's mind raced, she had to think of something to either keep Rarity from revealing her incompetence to Fluttershy, or somehow convince Rarity that she was mistaken. There was no telling what kind of evil blackmail she might be subjected to. Rarity had shown a suspicious amount of interest in her relationship with Dashi and Fluttershy, what if she wanted a piece of that pie? Trixie wasn't sharing. Trixie glared at Rarity. The whole time that Trixie was slowly driving herself up the wall, Rarity was looking at her. At first she wore the look of devious delight, but it gradually faded. She shifted in her chair. 
first turning towards Trixie a little more as though she wanted to devote her full attention, but then thought better of it, and withdrew letting her eyes drift up to the ceiling. A strangely contemplative look on her face. You're right, you know, I do a lot of things to prepare for a date. Most of which I wouldn't recommend to my worst enemy. Rarity mused. Trixie raised a brow at this. Oh, I know what I should be doing. There are all the usual platitudes of course, relax, be yourself, have confidence, etc. That's all well and good, but it's a lot harder to live up to when you really are like this other pony and failure is not an option. So what if they happen to like Swamp Green and I think it's just awful? I'm not going to mention that if I'm trying to make a good impression. Trixie was starting to feel that maybe this wasn't about her anymore. Rarity waved her for relics in the air. Maybe I'll just decide to change instead. I don't have to tell them I ever felt like it was the kind of color that is only good for crack or dial camouflage. It's not lying if I didn't tell them I felt differently yesterday, right? If I decide to change on the spot, I'm still being myself. My new self. If they wouldn't have liked the old me but like the new me then we all win, right? Despite how sudden the conversation had turned to this, Trixie nodded. Yes, that makes sense. In the heat of the moment, perhaps. Rarity sunk back into her chair with a long sigh. But ponies can't change just like that, darling. I could delude myself for a time perhaps, but it wouldn't really be me. Swamp green for clothes? Ow ow ow. Rarity looked revolted and a little green at the face, as though the only thing that held her back from actually barfing was the realization that that would be especially unladder-like. She cleared her throat. Besides, imagine yourself in the other pony's horseshoes. Would you want a pony while he's only pretending to be some pony you like? Or would you rather know the real pony and then decide if you like that pony or not? Nonsense. Trixie scoffed. What difference does it make how some pony acts as long as their adoration for Trixie is real? You mean besides the fact that your admirer would be lying to you? Rarity asked. Appalled. Do you really have so little regard for the truth? Trixie folded her four relics. Is that a crack at Trixie's show? She supposed she should have been expecting something like this. No, no, dear, Rarity said, exasperated. She glanced over at Fluttershy for a moment before returning her attention to Trixie with a curiously friendly expression. Forget it. Now what were we talking about? Trixie believes you were lamenting your failing love life, Trixie snapped. A twitch in Rarity's right eye momentarily fractured the pleasant expression she wore. How uniquely eloquent. Yes, I suppose I was, wasn't I? It's a shame they don't serve drinks here, I could use one, she said while turning away from Trixie. That was random, Trixie thought. Granted, given how warm it was in here, she wasn't opposed to the idea of a nice glass of ice water right now. That Trixie can agree with. Rarity didn't reply. That had to mean Trixie had won. Strangely, Trixie couldn't quite remember what it was that she'd been victorious in. After a few minutes of silence, Trixie picked up on the fact that Rarity hadn't said a single word. Sure, Trixie meant to make sure Rarity wouldn't say anything about her insecurity and she definitely accomplished that, but still. This didn't feel like a victory somehow. A soft cough directed Trixie's attention back to Fluttershy, who met her gaze and nodded towards Rarity. Trixie gave her a confused look and silently mouthed what? All Trixie got in response from her was a sorrowful look with those big blue doe eyes. Clearly, something was wrong. Trixie's finely tuned senses could tell that much right away. Aside from the sounds the Spaponias were making as they went about their business, it had not been this quiet all day. Which was odd, given that Rarity would not shut up for the life of her before. Somehow Trixie was apparently the bad guy in this scenario. Normally, Trixie wouldn't think twice about this kind of thing, but Fluttershy was expecting her to do something. It would have helped if she'd been more clear on exactly what Trixie was supposed to be doing. 
The silence was clearly part of the problem. Trixie would tackle that first. Suo. Trixie stretched out the word uncomfortably along as she tried to find something to follow it up with. Nice, ah, uh, weather we're having, isn't it? Maybe she should have stretched it a little longer. Yes. Rarity replied without so much as opening her eyes. She talked. Mission accomplished. A wave of relief washed over Trixie. She had solved the problem by cunningly asking Rarity a question. Now things were back to normal. Curiously, the silence returned right away. Of course, that was only natural if no pony was speaking, but Trixie thought there was supposed to be a conversation happening now. Trixie, ah, uh, supposes we can't thank Rainbow Dash for that now? She's in charge of weather now you know. I know. Again the conversation died. Over the next few minutes, Trixie made a few other, equally banal, attempts at striking up a conversation, with equally lousy results. Even though Rarity clearly wasn't ignoring her, she also wasn't making any effort to reply with anything more than necessary whenever Trixie addressed her. It was frustratingly clear that Rarity didn't want to talk to her. She wasn't quite giving her the silent treatment, but she might as well be. This would have suited Trixie just fine. If only it wasn't apparently her job now to do something about it. Trixie would rather be arguing than this. That gave Trixie an idea. Trixie saw some pony in a swamp green dress earlier today. It was so lovely, Trixie wonders why it's not used more often. What? Who? To Trixie's delight, Rarity actually looked at her with interest this time, if only for a moment. Wait. You didn't actually see any pony, did you? The corner Trixie's mouth pulled up into a smug grin. Trixie saw plenty of ponies. None of them were wearing such a dress though. The confession earned an RFL glare from Rarity. Are you going to ignore Trixie again? I wasn't ignoring you. You were one to two words short of giving Trixie the silent treatment. Trixie says that's close enough. If you thought that was bad I once went two weeks without saying a word to my mother. What did she do? Die you a main green? Goodness no, she didn't listen to me, so I thought I might as well not speak to her then. Wait, really? You ignored her because she disobeyed you? No no no. I never said that. I said she didn't listen. Rarity quickly corrected. I had an eye for style at an early age and my mother. Less so. She would often ask my opinion, and naturally I was happy to advise her. Imagine my outrage when I discovered she would zone out almost as soon as I'd begun speaking. That witch. Trixie dad panned. Is that why you were not speaking with Trixie too? In part. Trixie can't help but notice you are speaking to her properly now. Although Trixie wasn't quite convinced it was an improvement, she did feel better. Perhaps that was because, in the corner of her eye, she could see Fluttershy's smile. Oh, I suppose I am. Rarity with mock surprise. But then, I can hardly accuse you of not listening anymore, can I? Not since you so ham-fistedly tried to bait me with that awful, awful color. Trixie smirked. How do you know Trixie didn't actually like it? Darling, I'd accuse you of a lot of things. Rarity had that cookie monster look in her eyes again. A lot of things. But your sense of fashion is one thing I actually like about you. Don't try to ruin it. So it was simply too unbelievable that the fashionable and discerning Trixie would have poor taste? Trixie can live with that. Oh, now. I wouldn't quite go that far, Rarity said while exchanging a look with the two Spaponies in attendance. As I understand it, you do favor or a de garbage fire. Oh, ha ha. Trixie rolled her eyes. Now Trixie knows you are lying. The only thing Trixie bought here was a wood and smoke fragrance. She said triumphantly. Aloe coughed. Lotus Blossom carefully studied the label on a bottle. Fluttershy found a keen interest in the condensation on a nearby wall. Rarity just gave Trixie a long, meaningful look. 
a creeping sensation of something being very wrong crawled up Trix's shoulders. What? Darling, Rarity began hesitantly. How do I put this delicately? Earlier, you said you wore this fragrance on your date. Yes. Of course. It's a lovely scent. Trixie said a little louder than she meant to. And you prattied up. Yes. You said before it is showing you care. Trixie cares, so of course she did. She folded up her legs across her chest. Rarity nodded. Yes, very good, but... How did you say Rainbow Dash reacted again? Trixie puffed up her chest. She was stunned of course, and mentioned that Trixie looked wonderful. As any pony with eyes would. Curiously, Rarity seemed to wait for her to go on. And, ah, uh, that she liked the effort Trixie put in. She cautioned, feeling less confident. In him, Rarity looked uneasy, but spoke up. So, anything missing? Well, she didn't mention the perfume. Trixie noticed a sinking feeling in her stomach. Wait, you are not suggesting that she left it out on purpose? Rarity gave the half smile. Well, Rainbow might not be the sharpest needle in the pincushion, but even she realizes on some level that telling one's date you smell weird is a faux pas. A fire ignited in Trixie's cheeks. She didn't want to believe it, but maybe Dash really hadn't liked it. But, that's nonsense. It's the smell of the stage. The hard wooden planks, the fireworks. It's perfect. Who wouldn't like it? Trixie, darling, did you mean to smell like a stage show or a mare? Trixie doesn't like your tone. Trixie said with the serenity of a trodden upon cat. And she is not about to take relationship advice from some pony who gets ignored by her own mother. Exchanging hateful glares with rarity, Trixie tried to remember why exactly she had gone through the trouble of getting the hag to speak to her again. Of course she should have expected Rarity was just going to use the privilege to embarrass her somehow. Very well, I'm sorry. Rarity said suddenly. What? Trixa blinked. I did not mean to upset you and I may have gone a little bit too far there. I was wrong. I'm sorry. Rarity extended her hoof towards Trixie. Friends? As far as Trixie could tell, Rarity seemed sincere. It didn't make a great deal of sense to Trixie, but she shook hooves anyway. Ah, uh, sure. Friends. Why are you being weird? I've never met any pony quite so. Challenging to be around. Half the things you say just set my teeth on edge. However, Fluttershy tells me you don't do it on purpose, so I'm trying to take that into account. Ah. Oh. Trixie, ah, uh, sees. She supposes. It was a strange sentiment, but apparently it bought her the benefit of the doubt. Still, Trixie couldn't just let an accusation like that fly by. But what has Trixie ever said to you? Really? You? Rarity paused and closed her eyes, slowly rubbing her temples for a moment before looking at Trixie again. She spoke calmly, every personal thing I've told you. You've used as ammunition in the short time we've spoken. You mocked my love life, you taunted me with my dislikes, and you even brought my mother into it. Trixie blinked, dumbstruck. Ah, uh, oh. The, the, ah, uh, the swamp green thing. That was just a joke. Even as she said it, it struck Trixie just how feeble her excuses were. At the time, she had not given a second thought to the comments. But now she felt miserable. Ah. But Trixie didn't make fun of your overly expensive imported bottled soap. Or at least you hadn't. Rarity groaned, laying her full relic across her eyes as though to block out the stupidity. I would tell you to think before you speak, but what would be the point? We tell Rainbow Dash that and it never helps with her either. I suppose that means you deserve each other. Trixie can't deny we make an excellent pair, she smirked for a moment, but then folded her ears back. Look. Trixie is sorry. Rarity froze, 
then slowly lifted up her hoof to look at Trixie with a look of bewilderment. As though she'd just seen a fish saying, You. You are? This wasn't quite the reaction Trixie had expected. What? Is something wrong? Rarity snapped out of her daze and shook her head. Ah, no. No. It's just... I've never heard you say that without sarcasm before. Her lips curled into a playful smile. I wasn't even sure if you were capable of apologizing for anything. Huh. The great and powerful Trixie's talents are wide and varied. Trixie waved her four legs about in a failing gesture to look impressive while lying down. But, don't get used to it. A good magician won't show her audience the same trick twice. I suppose that means any chance of getting you to apologize for ruining my mane is officially out the window then, in him. Rarity raised a single brow. No, Trixie flashed an innocent smile, but Trixie can tell you she has no intention of doing so again. Rarity released a mock sigh and shrugged her shoulders. That we'll have to do I suppose. Well. Trixie thoughtfully stroked her chin as she appeared deep in thought. As an encore for her adoring audience, Trixie will divine one positive thing about you. How about that? Oh. Rarity's ears perked up and it was clear she was giving Trixie her full attention. Do go on. Your telekinesis. Trixie faked a cough to try and cover her mouth in an attempt to hide the shameful red of her cheeks. She still wasn't quite over her defeat earlier. It was very impressive. Nah. Nothing compared to Trixie in her prime of course, but to be able to contend with a great and powerful Trixie at even a mere fraction of her magnificent power makes you a remarkable match. How did you learn to do that? Would you believe a self-defense class? Rarity adopted what Trixie could only assume had to be some sort of martial arts fighting pose, but she suffered the same problem as Trixie and failed to make it look impressive while laying down. While rescue via handsome prince is of course preferable. It is not always terribly expedient. You learn it fine telekinesis control in a half hour class? Trixie raised an eyebrow. Oh, that. Rarity waved it off. I've been working with fabric since I was a filly. I suppose I just got a lot of practice. You should try wielding a sewing needle, a pair of scissors and three sheets of fabric at the same time. Not that I'm suggesting I could do that from the start of course. I worked my way up to it. Trixie's eyes widened. You'll have to show Trixie that sometime. Why I'd be happy to. I've no doubt that you'll be dropping by soon, Rarity said with an air of mystery. I have to say, you should perform this routine more often. I'm sure there are more audiences who will adore it. What routine? You know. Conjure up an apology and divine something nice to say about some pony. I'm positive you will be a hit. Whether that was a sincere comment or an insult Trixie couldn't quite tell. Yet, if Rarity was making an effort to give Trixie the benefit of the doubt when she said something off-color, perhaps Trixie could return the favor. On the other hoof, that could be exactly what the crafty unicorn wanted her to think. Ultimately, Trixie just smiled and nodded. Trixie will keep that in mind. Before any of that though, Trixie feels she must ask. How did the thing end? With your mom? Ah, well. Rarity looked surprised but she smiled at her. We reconciled of course. My mother might not have understood a thing I said, but she still asked me because she wanted to spend time with me and it was all I would talk about at the time. Well, or now for that matter. She blushed and cleared her throat. Good. Trixie smiled. There were few things she wouldn't wish upon enemies, but every pony deserved a mother's love. Do you still do that? She visits. Rarity said simply. Say, could you do me a favor? Although Trixie was a little apprehensive, she nodded. Trixie is willing to entertain your request. Rarity clapped her hooves together. Excellent, excellent. You won't regret it I'm sure. See, I actually may have checked a wrong box on the form at some point and ordered a vial of material perfume. It's not my kind of fragrance, 
but I feel like it would suit you perfectly. Would you be willing to take it off my hooves? If you don't like it, just throw it out. Trixie could feel the fire in her veins rekindle as prepared herself to react when Rarity tried to rag on her choice in cosmetics again. It took her a moment to realize that Rarity was waiting on an answer, without ever getting to that part. Ahem. Um, well, when you put it that way. Trixie supposes she can do you this favor. As a friend. Rarity held a look of refined satisfaction. Wonderful, thank you, darling.